And now let's introduce you to an Oscar nominee that you probably have never heard of, even though he's been nominated 21 times. And that is the most of anybody without a win. This year, Kevin O'Connell is nominated for Best Sound Mixing for his work on Mel Gibson's Hacksaw Ridge. It's the true story about World War II hero Desmond Doss. O'Connell has worked with Gibson before on Apocalypto and The Passion of the Christ. The work that he does unfolds in the background, yet it is critical to cohesive storytelling. Taking music, sound effects, and dialogue, O'Connell weaves everything together to complement what we see on the screen. When Frame producer Michelle Lance met recently with O'Connell, he started by explaining that even after 21 nominations, the thrill of the Oscars hasn't yet worn off. Hi, my name's Kevin O'Connell, and I'm a sound mixer, and I worked on Hacksaw Ridge. This is my 21st Oscar nomination. Um, the last time I was nominated was 10 years ago. It's a little bit different now for me because I have children of my own, so they were thrilled and excited. The whole house, everybody got up and was running around. I'm very grateful and honored and humbled. One of the most challenging scenes in the movie is when uh, Desmond Doss gets to Okinawa into what is about to be one of the most brutal battles that you've ever seen on film. It's blood. We're not in Kansas anymore, Dorothy. A film like Hacksaw Ridge has literally thousands of tracks that are on the mixing console at a time. In London, Rupert Gregson Williams is actually recording a fabulous score which then comes to us broken down into food groups. So I have the orchestra separate from the woodwind, separate from the brass, the percussion, the choir, the synth, etc. Also at the same time, 300 explosions, 1,000 rifle shots, thousands of whiz bys flying over the head, the USS Missouri, which is firing 16-inch naval cannons, and then the dialogue editors have spent hours uh, meticulously crafting the dialogue so that everything is 100% in sync. Put your head right here. Put your hand on there, John. If we took every single track and we put it up at zero and just played it, it would literally sound like a train wreck. So what we do is we guide the audience through the entire film by continually shifting the perspectives of every single sound they hear. Get down, sir! One of the most important parts of that scene as well was that t it was 10 minutes of hell and then we immediately cut to a silent moment where the guys are sitting in the bunker. And that was one of the most important things for Mel too is to have that contrast of how huge and big and explosive those battle scenes can be and then all of a sudden it all stops and it's deathly quiet at night and the guys are sitting there talking about what a hellish day they've had. Brunelli and Henry dead in the first 15 minutes, just straight off when suddenly they are uh, surprised by a Japanese soldier who pops his head up over the berm. And at that moment, uh, we couldn't figure out exactly what sound to use uh, to scare the crap out of the audience. So um, Mel said, hey, hey guys, can I give it a shot? So we gave Mel a microphone, we ran him the scene, and just as the Japanese soldier pops his head up over the berm, Mel le leans into the microphone and says, ah! Well, trust me when I say that when we put that sound in all 56 speakers in the room and pumped it up, when we played it the first time, it scared the crap out of all of us, too. When I was 18 years old, I was an L.A. County firefighter, and my mother, Skippy O'Connell, worked in the sound department at 20th Century Fox. She would see me come home from the fires, and I was beaten up, burned, bruised, battered. And she said, you know, I don't think this is the type of job I'd like to see you doing. Why don't you come down to the studio, check it out. Maybe you could uh, find something for you there. So in January of 1978, I started as an apprentice at the uh, Samuel Goldwyn Studios. And uh, I said to her after like six months, I said, Ma, how can I ever thank you for this? And my mom was this feisty Irish uh, lady, and she said to me, she goes, you know, I'll tell you what you can do. She goes, you work hard, you work really hard, and then one day you go win yourself an Oscar, and you can thank me up there on that stage in front of the whole world. 